Hello and welcome to Shampoo and Booze episode number 58. We are a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, both sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. You can send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. We're also available to give design and listing advice. We are calling ourselves Not Perfect Design. You can check out our services page at notperf.com if you want to book a time with us. And we're doing a giveaway. One of our services is that we give design advice and suggestions to people running short-term rentals. So if you want to submit your Airbnb listing to us, We will choose a lucky listener and give some feedback over video and everyone will get to watch it and see what our advice is. So if you want to submit your listing, send it to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we will do that in one of the episodes coming up. Okay, so last episode we talked about kitchens and cooking and the amenities that you need for that situation. Now we are talking about other amenities, like in the bathroom, and we're talking about linens. So what do you need? What don't you have? Etc. Great. So let's just dive in. I feel like we have the two categories. We have what's in the bedroom and what's in the bathroom. Let's start with the bedroom and thinking about how do you choose linens for the bedroom, particularly on the bed? How? What was the evolution you went through, Ryan? So number one, I want to say there are a lot of old school places that don't provide any linens at all. They do not provide towels. They do not provide sheets for the beds. You might think I'm crazy, but it's true. That's insane. Where, like what? Like who does that? Okay. Cape Cod, Massachusetts, is well known. Number one, they have had a vacation rental industry for decades, for generations they've had that. And back in the day, they would just be like, you have to bring all your own linens. Like, because you know why? Cleaning linens is a full-time job. It's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of resources. Yeah, it's like the more beds you have double that. It's like a wash per bed, basically. It's a lot of work to keep linens clean. So I understand why people are like, you got to bring it and you got to take it home and we're cleaning the house and that's it. We traveled in Scandinavia a couple of years ago for about a month and there were several hosts that if you read their description close they would either charge you extra for bed linens. It was like $25 per person per night. Crazy. That's insane. Or they would say you have to bring your own. And we're like, we're driving around Scandinavia, like, you know, as foreigners. I don't have like sheets and towels. That's insane. It was nuts. Yeah, that's so, crazy. So, number one, don't be those people. Like, You want to provide a place that is not charging extra for linens. It's just included. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's like going to a hotel. The hotel's not charging you extra for linens, and they're not charging you extra for towels. I mean, I feel like if you're staying in an old old school place in Cape Cod, you know, it better be a cabin or something, you know, like you don't want to show up at someone's house and find an empty mattress, you know, and like dingy old pillows so definitely don't don't even go there right so for us uh what was important was um having a little bit of design on the beds like at high-end hotels or lots of hotels uh you know they use white mostly it's white beds and it looks good you know and it's clean and you can see that it's clean and we use white sheets and white pillowcases and white um towels as well just because i want people to be like this is clean um i've stayed in airbnbs that have black towels that have maroon towels and i'm like 
I don't know if this is clean. It's like kind of like a weird. Uh, uh, I've also stayed in Airbnbs that had white towels that had stains all over them. No. Yes, yes. Uh, we stayed in a couple of places that had that, and you're like, okay, so you're not getting like the right uh, combination here. No. <laughs> Something that's important for linens is. Um, having a blanket that has a duvet cover yes. or just a cover, yeah. whatever. Um, so the duvet is the blanket and the duvet cover is what covers it. And you can get them at Ikea. That's where I get them. I get them all at Ikea and they have cool patterns on them and they contribute to your house looking cool in photos and your house looking cool when people get there and that way you don't have to wash the blanket every time. I have talked to so many other hosts that are like, I don't know what that is. And it's pretty important to not have to clean your blankets every time, but also people understand you pull this off and you clean it every time. Yep. And as a guest, you're like, oh, great. They have a duvet, duvet co- cover. That means that they're cleaning this bed every time. Right. Because if you just have a blanket, like a comforter blanket that has no cover... It's most likely that those people are not cleaning that every time. And I know for certain that they aren't. Mm -hmm. And I know some hotels that do that. Lots of hotels do that and they don't clean them every time. Yeah, right. You know, that's, (laughs) it's like, it is a lot of work. You know, cleaning linens is a lot of work. And it's, honestly, it's part of my job. Yeah. Like, that's my job, you know, is to do the laundry. And I, you know, I basically have two nice sets, full bed sets and I just clean them, switch them out every single time. And I have one room, right. you know, I have one room, I have one bed, you know, so and I actually use colored linens, like I have like a light blue, but they're high quality cotton, you know, so it's right. like, you just switch it out, you don't have to like mix and match pillows all the time, you know, it's like, it's I, I feel like the more like systems in place, you can have like that so that every time you're not trying to like mix and match colors or patterns or it's like just super straightforward. Right. So that's what we have too. So what we have is I actually have three sets for every bedroom at every house, you know, depending on the size of the room, you know, if it's a queen bed, if it's a king bed, we have bunk beds. So I just like have it organized by room right now. So there's like three sets for every house. Because if I have my cleaners coming and I haven't finished all the laundry, it doesn't matter. Like there's always two clean sets to go out. It's fine. So that is important that you have another set. I've heard of cabin owners, rental owners, having their cleaners do the laundry while they're there and then put everything back on the beds. Like they have one set. You mean, do the guests do the laundry? No. They're like, my cleaner comes, throws everything in the washer, and then puts everything back on. Oh, I see. They have one set. Jeez, that's interesting. It's interesting because you're like, I don't think there's enough time for that unless you're not doing like a back-to-back rental. And also, I don't expect my cleaners to be there long enough to like do three. We have three bedrooms in each rental. So to me, I'm always like, just give them a clean set and send the dirty set home. Or if you're paying them to do the laundry, they just bring it away with Mm -hmm. them. Um, We also don't have a washer dryer at two of our rentals. One of our rentals has a washer, but not a dryer. So you're kind of like, this is not, it's not set up for that. Ours aren't. And see how I'm set up because it's in my apartment. If I have my cleaner do my changeover, which often I do, She'll just throw everything that's dirty into my laundry room or into the washer. She'll even start it sometimes. And then, but everything gets, every uh, uh, the whole new set gets put on. And then whenever I come home or if she's doing another changeover, then she'll finish the laundry after that, you know? So it's like, if I have a quick, if I have someone there for two days, you know, it's like, it all kind of comes out in the wash (laughs) yes well that makes sense you're like here's the clean set it's ready to go you do the changeover you cleaned all the stuff you did the you know you threw the laundry and the whatever and then she left she doesn't have to wait for the laundry no exactly i mean just waiting there for me or or for her next time right um so where do you where did you get your linens I believe i got them at target it was just like a nice high quality cotton set um, yeah. they're expensive. They're not cheap, you know, for a nice set 
for a bed, you know, it can be upwards of $100. Yep. Um, that being said, I actually, you know, a lot of my house linens are um, like things like, um, you know, the bathroom rugs that I have. I found those used, but they were like brand new from Ikea, yep. you know. So if I'm going to buy used linens like that, I mean, I guess that doesn't really count as a linen, but if I'm going to buy used items like that um, or dish towels or, you know, sometimes like hand towels, you can often find really nice quality hand towels used. I make sure that they're basically brand new. You know, I won't buy something that's going to... Towels actually get very holy or ragged very quickly. And so um, I like to not buy those used um, but those other smaller accessory things I can often find used. But I, yeah, I went to Target. Where did you find your linens? Um, we got, so we got a bunch at Ikea because they, w- they do mm-hmm. have a bunch there. And we get, duvets come from Ikea. And actually I yep. buy a lot of my duvets, duvet, sorry, I always call them duvets, but they're duvet covers. Jay, Jay is always like, I'm getting confused between the duvet cover and the duvet itself. Like, which is which? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> the, the cover. <laughs> it's the cover. Um, so I will often buy new, brand new IKEA duvet covers on eBay because people will like have extra ones or they'll like, you know, buy two or three and not like the pattern. So I like am always cruising on uh, on eBay for for stuff like that. Um, I have had people give me um, duvet covers when I bought a bed. They're like, oh, we have all these like West Elm, like gorgeous, crazy, amazing. You're like linen um, you know, duvet covers that they're like, it was in the guest room and, you know, no one ever used it. I'm like, great. You know, like it's beautiful. It's like a $300 duvet cover, you know? So stuff like that. Um, like you said, if I find stuff at an estate sale or, uh, at a thrift store, it has to be like pretty much new. The other place you can go is Costco. So I have a Costco membership and, uh, you know, I buy like big blocks of like toilet paper and like soap and OxyClean and stuff like that at Costco. But they have white towels. They have like their hospitality series where it's not like super high end, like they're really good price. They're white, they're fluffy. So I got my towels there. I get washcloths and I get hand towels there because I buy like you have an apartment with one room and I have right now a uh, three uh, about to have three three bedrooms. <laughs> so I'm like I need stacks of these because like you said towels like I don't know what happens but they'll get a hole in them or they'll get a stain that you just you cannot get out and I'm like this has to go and I need to have new ones. So yeah. that does happen. I don't use bleach. I don't know about you but I generally no. do not use bleach. Um because I think it's a nasty chemical, <laughs> but I use, you know, so it kind of sucks to have white, white, I have mostly white sheets and white towels, but I use OxyClean. That's what I use too. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, I, sometimes I can't tell if it's working. I went, I went for many months not using it and Jay's like, this stuff doesn't look very white. I'm like, okay, I'll go back to using OxyClean. <laughs> like there are ways to get stains out that, you know, I try very hard to get stains out because I don't want to have to buy new stuff. (laughs) Right, right, right. And so this is a thing that people ask us a lot. Do you use microfiber materials? Right. And for me, the answer is no. Particularly for sheets, right? Like people really, there's, that's a whole thing right now. Not just, not just microfiber sheets, but microfiber friggin' everything. It's like blankets and Yeah, no, we don't, we don't use a I had some of those and and it was Jay initially who was just like, I hate these. I don't like the way they're polyester. From what I understand, they're polyester, which honestly is an amazing fabric because it doesn't wrinkle and it mostly doesn't stain. I mean, other than like a grease stain or something like that, I've never seen them stain, which obviously you're like, well, I want those, (laughs) but they feel really crappy. Yeah, they feel horrible. Like, they feel cheap. Yeah, they feel cheap. I I always think in terms of the linens that you're going to buy for a bed, you know, that is their most 
intimate experience in your space. You know, it's like the kitchen's one thing, the bathroom's one thing, the living space, all of that, but they are actually going to get into a bed. And the things that are against their skin, the way that the bed's made, that should be a good experience because it's going to be the thing that they actually remember the most weirdly. You know, they'll remember your communication style. They'll remember the area. But if the bed feels cheap or the linens feel cheap or the whole experience feels a little bit like old, they're going to remember that. If they see a stain on the pillow, <laughs> they're going to remember that. They're going to be like, this place is gross. I mean, it's just, it just, it's those little details. People pick up on them. You might think that they're not going to see them, but they will. Right. And I obsessively clean. I mean, it, it does sound a little bit crazy to be like, everything's white and everything's cotton and you cannot have a single stain on anything. (laughs) But I mean, there's a lot of logic for that. And, you know, it's why higher end hotels and things like that use that. I mean, again, I don't use white sheets, and part of that is just aesthetically. I feel like it doesn't work in my space, and that's just not how I roll. But, you know, the higher end, high-quality cotton you can find, I think, the better. But, like, you're not using, like, black sheets. Like, you're... No, right. right. (laughs) People are going to get into the bed and see that it's clean. You know, they're Mm going to know it's clean because they can visually see that it's clean. Right, exactly. And that's why high-end hotels use white, because then yes. you're, well, and they use a ton of bleach, so that's easy. Right. But, um, right. Well, I think for a hotel, washing colors is more complicated, right. and so they just keep everything Everything's white. white. Everything gets washed together. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, other amenities. We talked about kitchen amenities extensively in the last episode, but... Uh, bathroom amenities are pretty important as well. Yep. And so the first thing that we that we put in either the bathroom or the kitchen is a first aid kit. And it's not even like a first aid kit where you have like, you know, like bandages and, you know, like what you would traditionally think. It's like Tylenol, a pair of tweezers, you know, just like uh, triple antibiotic ointment in case you cut mm-hmm. yourself, band-aids. You know, really Do you put Benadryl in there. Uh, Benadryl, yeah, it's like Ben. It's like basic. There's Benadryl. We have Tylenol. We have ibuprofen. You know, I've mm-hmm. had people message us. Oh, do you have? You know, I have a headache. I I need like ibuprofen. And we're like, yep, it's in the like first aid cabinet thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just basic stuff. Where if someone cuts themselves, they you know, it's like basic bathroom stuff. Honestly, right, right. And what other kinds of things do you? supply in the bathroom so uh i do want to talk about uh feminine products feminine Mm -hmm. products feminine products let's talk about it yes so tampons and pads i keep them in like a sealed like almost a tupperware container um i think actually the ones i bought at walmart hilariously have flowers on them um, not to be like super gendered or whatever, but I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I wanted it to be very obvious that if someone was needing something like that, that they would mm-hmm. open the under, you know, under the sink and be like, that is for someone having their period. You yes. Know? Right. Right. Um, without, I didn't put a label on it. I kind of was like, what am I going to put on here? Like feminine products. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. But I put. I buy, you know, a big box at Walmart or whatever of tampons uh, with the flushable. It's like flushable applicator, like the cardboard, because we have a septic system. Right. So I cannot have people putting like plastic down there. Plastic. Yeah, Yeah. by accident Um, or on purpose. So I do those. um, and And I've actually heard when people wrote us, you know, people will write you like private comments in that they're like Mm -hmm. i am so glad that you had these because i had you know like an emergency or whatever and i needed them and they were right there you know someone thought about it yeah exactly that's great and the other thing i like to offer are um like cotton pads and uh q-tips yep you know like i have a little um it's actually right outside of the bathroom i have a little wall mountain wall mountain wall mounted cabinet yeah and it has all of those things in it. 
I I stopped giving um, cotton cotton balls, cotton pads. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have makeup remover pads. Oh yeah. Um, and we have washcloths. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of my solution because I don't know. I I wasn't noticing people using cotton balls or cotton pads very often. Mm-hmm. Like they would just sit there forever, and we were like, right. nobody's using these. I don't want to like yeah. stock these. Yep, yep, yep. But I think those are good things. Um, Q-tips, super important. It always yep. sucks when you go somewhere and you, like, you know, take a shower and your ears are all wet and you're like, oh, I forgot my Q-tips and there aren't any here. I, it's one of those little details that's so nice. Yeah. How, how do you think about shampoo and soap and lotion? Okay, so shampoo has been a big debate in my house because... For a long time, I was doing shampoo and conditioner, and I had like body gel or whatever. I we don't do bar soap or anything like that. We do like shower mm-hmm. gel. So in big bottles, you were so, offering that. Yeah, at first I had like whatever it was like a big bottle and big bottles of each. So there's three things, mm-hmm. and it was such a pain because sometimes my cleaners wouldn't fill them up or they wouldn't think they were that empty or one was empty, but one wasn't. And you know, it was just like crazy. So I was at Whole Foods one time and I saw this like three in one and it was, um, it's shampoo, body wash and bubble bath. It's not conditioner. And I was just like, you know what? It's not cheap. It's like eight to $9 a bottle. But it's, I think it's 32 ounces. So it's honestly not that bad. And I was like, that's what, and it's all natural and it's got like nice smells. It's like lavender or citrus. And it's just called Everyone, Everyone Soap 3 in 1. And I'm like, that is, like we were talking about systems. That is my system now. I buy it in bulk. I buy it, you can buy it at Walmart, but I buy it for cheaper on Amazon. I buy we can link to it. Yeah, we'll link to it. Um, I buy it by the case. I buy like eight at a time. And that lasts months and months. And so what I tell my cleaners is when it gets down to like a quarter full, um, you know, there's like 25% left. I'm like, send that home to me. Put the new one in because I keep like a full one in their bin of like refillables. And so then I take that one quarter because it's all the same smell and I start putting it in another jar. Like I have an empty, you know, an empty pump and I start filling that in. So four, you know, little ones become one big one and I just send that back. So it all gets used. Um, But the whole shampoo, conditioner and like a body gel, I was like, I can't, this is like, you know, I'm shopping for each one separately and I'm just like, I can't deal with this. I'm just doing one. That's a great solution. Yeah, I I offer uh, shampoo, conditioner, and I use bar soap. Okay. Because that's what I use in my shower. And I'm like, this is available. I also ha- actually I have a big bottle of Dr. Bronner's that I leave in there too. And I find people don't often need them. And I don't know if that's just because they're more in a city situation or they're not there for as long, but right. I've found that I, I rarely have to replenish it. So I think people bring their own stuff. Like, I think people for sure bring their own stuff. I was getting overwhelmed with providing all those things. And I was like, you know what? Like women who have, especially women uh, who have like specific um, hair regimens, which I don't. um, I literally like stopped using shampoo. (laughs) It's like it's making my hair really frizzy. I use other stuff. But um, so that's my specific regimen is not using any. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But like they will bring their own. I know that they will. So my thing is like a backup or it's, it's totally a backup or it's for little kids or it's for the husband who like washes his hair with Irish spring bar soap, you know, (laughs) literally. (laughs) Literally Yeah. Don't get me started on that one. Um, so what about, uh, like toothbrush, toothpaste, floss? Like, do you offer those things? Yeah. Um, so floss, definitely. It sucks if you floss your teeth regularly, you're that kind of person and you don't have any. So floss, always have floss. Um, no extra toothbrush. I think we used to have those, but it just, it was like nobody was using them. We do have toothpaste in like a squeezy bottle thing not like a tube 
Um, and honestly, we we almost never have to fill those up because, like we were saying, it's like a backup. Most people are going to bring toothpaste, but if they forgot, they're very happy that you have it there. Yes. I don't offer toothbrush or toothpaste. Okay. I offer floss, and mostly because there's a CVS within walking distance right. of my house, and I found that people just go to the CVS. And most likely people brought it with them, but um, yeah. yeah, right, you're in a city. Like, if people forgot something and they already went to the grocery store, and, you know, it's like we want to have yeah. extra stuff for them. Um, I mean, there's so much within walking distance. I, I, right. I rarely have people asking for those things, but I like to have them there, some of them, just as a right. backup, especially if someone gets in at like midnight. Yeah, and I think for most of these um, bathroom amenities, you do have to think of them as not, I mean, shampoo and conditioner and I don't have conditioner, but shampoo and soap. I have been to Airbnbs that do not have those things. And I'm traveling in Europe and I'm like, it would have been nice if they left me some shampoo and soap or some anything, you know, anything <laughs> like the last time we were traveling in Europe, I just bought like a thing of like generic smelling shampoo. And I just use that as body soap and shampoo and like to clean my clothes. I was like, yes. I just I can't depend on the Airbnbs to have these. <laughs> That's why I like offering Dr. Bronner's mm-hmm. because right. people can use that to wash clothing if they need to. Also, they can use my washer and dryer right. if they need to, but it's a kind of one of those all-in-one soaps. That's a great that's a great um, solution, I think. I like the all-in-one because you're like, this is here. You can use it. If you don't like it, either bring your own or or go to the grocery store and like buy your fancy shampoo, whatever. The other thing that I like to do in the bathrooms is have like a basket on the back of the toilet that has like basic stuff. So every toilet has, you know, a square box of tissues. This is in every bathroom, whether it's a half bath or a full bath. Um, A little air air spray, uh, you know, air freshener, whether it's like, you know, you made it yourself and it's essential oils or you bought it at the store or whatever. Um, just a little spray and then some lotion. And again, I use the everyone, everyone soap, uh, brands and it's just like, you know, body lotion. It's all natural. It's like a citrus, like aloe citrus and a big jug has lasted forever. You know, it's one of those things where you get out of the shower or it's winter time and you're like, Oh, I need that hand lotion, you know? And it's right there. So I'm going to add two of my pet peeves. One is I always like to offer a box of tissues in the bedroom. Yes. Like I've been to so many Airbnbs where there isn't anything, even in the bathroom, a box of tissues. Like tissues are basic Basic. human right. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, come on. Box of tissues in the bathroom, box of tissues in the bedroom. Yes. The other thing that drives me bananas about Airbnbs is like plug-in scented things. Oh, that's like a whole episode. Well, then we could do a whole episode about I'm this. I'm serious. Basically, I am so sensitive yes. to fragrances. Yes. And houses that have like crazy air fresheners, crazy potpourri, weird bathroom sprays, like settle down, people. Settle down. Like, don't put in Glade air freshener horribleness because I will inevitably unplug them all. Yes. <laughs> Look, we stayed at a place in Orlando. Um, it was downtown Orlando. Super cute. We loved Orlando, actually. Old, old, old downtown. It was very cool. Like old Florida. Nice. Yeah. So we walk in this house and we are like, there is like a wall of smell. And it is those Glade plugins in every single room. Some rooms had two. And I had to unplug, I unplugged them all and I opened the windows because I was like, I cannot breathe in here. It's, I don't know if they were covering up some kind of smell, but when we unplugged them and it went, you know, we were there for like a week. um, I was like, I don't smell anything bad. I don't know what it was that they thought they needed to do here. It was horrible. That's the thing is like, if you are doing that to cover up a smell, that is a problem. problem. Like number one, that's a problem. Like you should get to the root of that problem and don't cover it up with weird smells. And two, if you don't have a weird smell you're covering up, 
don't make a weird smell right with chemicals it's like yeah the bane of airbnbs yeah that is a big no-no because like you said i am super sensitive to smell too like if i that's something we're gonna have a whole laundry a whole laundry episode uh but one of the things that i'll talk about is using scented Scented. um detergent and fabric softeners yes right right it's a big no-no yeah, because, it's a big no. Yeah, like if you get into bed and all you can smell is that like perfume from the, <gasps> it's it's awful for people who are sensitive to smells. You can't sleep. You can't breathe. Also, scented candles, even if they're just sitting on coffee tables, like oh, yep. sometimes they're just like so overwhelming. Right. So don't assume that because you think something smells good that other people do. And and that's true with any of the like lotions. Actually, for a long time, I used unscented lotion. It was just like Jergens unscented. Um, and I think some of the natural stuff, like the the uh, everyone soap and lotion, like they're very mild. Like it, it it's a pretty mild like natural smell. And I'm super sensitive, so I'm like, if it's okay with me, I think other hypersensitive people might be okay with it. But anything like I've I've gone to Airbnbs too, where it's either a shampoo or a lotion that's like super fragrant and just it's it's too much. You you really do have or like scented um scented tissues like or scented trash bags like oh, any this the those scented are, trash bags they're bad People. like you can smell them from the next room over and you're just like what's happening like though that's not like straight out of a garden that's yeah, like, like straight out of a petrochemical <laughs> nightmare is. yeah so you you do have to be careful about things like that where you just want everything really neutral and you know not fragrant you know unless you're putting a bouquet of beautiful flowers on the table that's different <laughs> you know okay so that is it for the podcast this week if there is something we didn't mention an amenity that you love to have that we didn't talk about you should comment on the blog at shampooandbooze.com or you can email us at shampooandbooze at gmail.com. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we always do our best to cover topics that you care about. And don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your uh, design advice session with us. Thanks. Bye. Bye.